He's just a person that needs the energy of, of humans, you know. Bad Boy Entertainment. I named it a bad boy. Because I wanted to go against the grain. Anytime you go against the grain, they consider you like kind of bad. Given that Tanya had the fortitude to leave Diddy's environment, it is clear that she is not mentioned on any of the records. But there were serious repercussions for that choice. At Bad Boy, Tanya went from being one of the most promising musicians to losing everything and even almost homeless at one time. She considered ending her own life at one point. With a wonderful voice and a forceful duet with Lauren Hill, Tanya really had extraordinary talent and the potential to become one of the most well-known celebrities of her day. She took years to recover from what is often called the bad boy curse, and instead of becoming famous, she suddenly disappeared from the public view. Tanya was fortunate that she never wavered from her moral principles. Tanya persevered in her values and convictions, finally winning, in contrast to many celebrities who are now frantically attempting to hide their links to Diddy. What specifically did Tanya reveal about her time at Bad Boy, then? Did Diddy really try to put her in awkward circumstances? And what did she see at Diddy's label that convinced her that something evil was going on? Let's dissect it. Tanya put out a number of albums throughout the years, all of which demonstrated her development as a performer. Her music developed throughout time, reflecting both her own development and the changing nature of the music business. Her reputation as a formidable singer and an inspirational lyricist was cemented by songs like Rise Up and In the Light. Tanya swiftly rose to fame in the music industry as each record was praised by critics. Tanya's musical career is a good example of the power of ardor, tenacity, and the exceptional gift of a voice that captivates audiences. She had a soulful quality from an early age that extended beyond her singing. It created an emotional connection that could evoke emotions and memories. Her deep, rich voice surrounded listeners like a warm hug, fostering a genuine and intimate ambience. Being raised in a musically inclined household, Tanya was often surrounded by tunes and rhythms. Her love of music was greatly influenced by her early influences, including her father's piano playing and compositions in their hospitable living room and her mother's jazz singing career. Tanya had begun to make a name for herself in the local music scene by the time she was a teenager. Unquestionably talented, she soon caught the interest of neighborhood clubs and community gatherings where she displayed her singing abilities. Tanya's sound was a unique blend of modern R and B, jazz and soul. She had an innate ability to bring passion to every song, often incorporating personal experiences to give her performances more realism. She would spend endless hours researching the methods of performers like Etta James, Billie Holiday, and Aretha Franklin because she was so anxious to learn from their skill. She quickly rose to fame as a singer captivating crowds with her passionate renditions of beloved songs. That being said, Tanya's career had a dramatic changes in 1993. She co-starred with Lauren Hill, who is very brilliant, in the movie Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. She was thrust into the limelight and exposed to a larger audience thanks to this chance, which marked a significant turning point in her career. As a follow-up to the first sister act, the movie blended comedy, religion, and, above all, music. Tanya had a performance in the film that will never be forgotten, particularly her delivery of His Eye is on the Sparrow. She displayed her vocal prowess, as well as her deep comprehension of the song's meaning at that precise time. The lyrics, which discuss faith and heavenly protection, were beautifully complemented by Tanya's rich, soulful voice. Many audience members were moved to tears by the emotional depth she brought to her performance. It was a performance that would live on in the memory of everyone who saw it, a potent reminder of the resilience of hope and faith.
Tanya's prominence was further enhanced by the economic success of the movie soundtrack. Her performance of His Eye is on the Sparrow was praised by both music reviewers and fans, marking a turning point in her career. Tanya's gift was now recognized and honored, rather than being a secret gem. Following her breakthrough performance, Tanya faced the usual obstacles that many musicians endure in the business. She had to negotiate the intricacies of the music industry while being loyal to herself, and the unexpected celebrity was both exciting and daunting. But Tanya wasn't one to back down from a challenge. She started writing her own songs, incorporating her feelings and experiences into each one. Her following grew steadily as a result of her genuineness, which resonated with listeners. Tanya maintained her modesty in spite of her accomplishments. She had a keen awareness of her origins and the path that had brought her to this point. She often underlined the value of authenticity in her songs, saying that she wanted to establish a stronger connection with her listeners, in addition to providing them with entertainment. Tanya devoted her career to writing songs that reflected her conviction that music has the capacity to inspire and heal. Tanya was committed to supporting her community in addition to her singing profession. She established a foundation with the goal of assisting budding musicians and encouraging young musicians, taking inspiration from her personal hardships as well as those of people around her. She often planned mentoring programs and seminars to impart her wisdom to the next generation. Because Tanya was certain that all voices should be heard, she made it her goal to provide up-and-coming artists the resources they needed to succeed. As time went on, Tanya's impact in the music business grew even more. She worked with a wide range of musicians in pop, hip-hop, jazz, and other genres demonstrating her adaptability and capacity to go beyond musical borders. Her reputation as a musical legend was further cemented by each collaboration, which gave her the chance to experiment with new sounds and push her creative boundaries. Tanya's influence went much beyond only her music. She became an inspiration to young ladies who wanted to follow their ambitions. She often discussed the value of resilience and being loyal to oneself in the face of hardship. Many were inspired by her narrative of overcoming obstacles, which served as a reminder that success is not just determined by fame or money, but also by the sincerity of one's path and the relationships made along the way. Tanya is still performing and creating today captivating audiences all over the world with her ageless voice and poignant words. Her path is a prime example of the transformational power of music, marked by tenacity, passion, and an uncompromising dedication to her profession. More than simply a singer, Tanya is an example to everybody who has the courage to dream, showing that everything is possible with skill perseverance, and a strong trust in oneself. Tanya serves as a moving reminder that genuine artwork comes from the heart in a society that usually tries to define artists by their level of financial achievement. Her soulful and genuine music will continue to speak to a wide audience and have a lasting influence on the music business for many years to come. The legacy of Tanya is one of inspiration, empathy, and, most importantly, a celebration of the human spirit, whether it be via her remarkable performances, stirring songs, or commitment to elevate others. Tanya had a voice that could fascinate any audience, making her a natural talent. Early on, it was clear that she was destined for success in the music business. She was hailed as the next great thing by both fans and critics, and her brilliance was clearly generating enthusiasm. Her first album, Natural Thing, was released in 1994, solidifying her status as a rising talent. Her deep, soulful voice and wide range of musical genres were on full display in this album, which won her praise from critics and a devoted following. The bouncy, lively song Baby Baby, which showcased Tanya's vocal range and lyrical charm, was one of the album's highlights. 
Listeners were moved by the catchy tune and poignant lyrics, which led to widespread radio broadcasts throughout the country. Tanya was on the edge of being well-known due to her unquestionable charm and skill. Her second song, Through the Rain, which reached at number 27 on the Billboard Hot 100, came right after. This accomplishment, which was her first appearance on the esteemed list, was a major turning point in her career. There was no denying Tanya's success, and the music world was humming with excitement about what she would do next. Her live and music video performances had a captivating magnetic energy that enthralled viewers. When Tanya was nominated for Best New Artist at the Soul Train Awards in 1995, her brilliance was finally acknowledged. This notable honor highlighted her influence on the music industry. However, Tanya faced difficulties that would eventually hamper her career trajectory just as her fame was rising. It was none other than seeing Diddy Combs who contacted her as her fame grew. Diddy was constructing his bad boy empire at the time, which included a roster of avant-garde performers, including Faith Evans, Mad Dollary, and the notorious big known for creating tunes that reached the top of the charts and establishing the hip hop and R&B sound of the time. Bad Boy Records was the epitome of success in the 1990s. Diddy's offer was alluring, and for any musician hoping to become famous, joining Bad Boy appeared like a fantastic chance. But for Tanya, it was a turning point that would eventually have unanticipated effects on her career. In addition to his keen talent sense, Diddy was infamous for his demanding personality and the high standards he set for his musicians. He was also recognized for his ambitious approach to the music industry. At first, the partnership seemed good. Diddy was very talented at creating songs, and their collaboration was electrifying. Tanya looked forward to the opportunities that followed. She was excited to work with well-known musicians and producers who might improve her sound and further her career. But when she had to negotiate the intricacies of Diddy's concept for her music, the strain started to build. Tanya felt the weight of expectation bearing down on her as she worked on her next project. Diddy had a distinctive style and a strong idea of what he desired from his musicians, and he often guided their artistic trajectories in ways that Tanya felt constrained. The creative freedom she had enjoyed started to wane as she began to feel pressured to fit into a style that didn't quite suit her. There was a fierce sense of competition in Bad Boy. Tanya saw Diddy's intense commitment to promoting his musicians, but it also meant that there was a never-ending competition for attention. Tanya felt pressured to create a hit that would keep her relevant because of the dominance of heavyweights, like the notorious big on the charts. What at first seemed like a dream come true quickly turned into a cause of anxiety and insecurity. When Tanya started seeing changes in her artistic orientation, things started to go south. Her experiences and creative vision were no longer completely represented in the songs she was creating. Rather than her own voice, they seemed to be more and more impacted by economic viability. She felt constrained by the need to create songs that would be popular on the radio, and the enjoyment she had previously taken from creating music started to wane. The music business was changing dramatically as 1996 drew near. R&B was changing, and hip-hop was gaining popularity. Tanya was at a turning point in her life, battling the demands of celebrity and the reality of the business. As she battled to find her place in the greater scheme of things, the initial excitement of belonging to the bad boy family began to fade. Tanya tried to maintain her concentration on her love of music in spite of these obstacles. In an attempt to regain the genuine sound that had first drawn people to her, she threw herself into creating songs. She worked with a number of producers in an effort to match her need for personal expression with economic success. She felt the walls closing in on her, however, the more she attempted to claim her creative identity. 
Despite these challenges, Tanya's following remained strong and anxiously awaited her next move. Many of them supported her in overcoming the obstacles that awaited her since they saw her brilliance and promise. However, Tanya's influence in the field waned with each year that went by, and the difficulties she faced started to eclipse her early achievements. The music industry was changing quickly by the late 1990s, and many once successful musicians were finding it difficult to stay relevant. The instability of the profession, where success may be ephemeral and often dependent on other forces beyond an artist's control, was reflected in Tanya's experience. She saw colleagues who had previously been in the limelight fading into the background as they fought their own struggles in a harsh business. In spite of the obstacles, Tanya was resolved to keep going. She held on to her love of music despite the fact that she knew the path would be full of ups and downs. She tried to recapture the pleasure of making work that spoke to her heart and soul while juggling the demands of celebrity. Her perseverance was strengthened by her desire to establish a stronger connection with her audience, which drove her to rethink her approach to music. As Tanya overcame her obstacles, she realized that her path was about being honest and being true to herself, not only about fame. Her voice remained a potent instrument of expression despite all the difficulties. Tanya was determined to follow her own road, one that would return her to the core of her music and the strong bonds she had built with her fans. In a society that sometimes placed a higher value on financial success than artistic integrity, Tanya was different from the other musicians who were drawn to bad boy entertainment by the label's promises of glamour and glamour. She had already heard reports about Diddy's propensity for luring his musicians into a life of drinking and revelry, according to a number of industry insiders. She was cautious after hearing stories of crazy club nights, binge drinking, and the unrelenting quest for stardom. Tanya wanted her career to focus on the music rather than the excess that often accompanied it. Therefore, she was determined to avoid that atmosphere. But when Bad Boy made the offer in 1996, it was too good to refuse. For any budding musician, the chance to collaborate with Diddy, one of the most significant personalities in the music business at the time, was a dream come true. Tanya finally made the decision to join with Bad Boy Entertainment after much consideration. She was thrilled about the possibilities that awaited her and started working on her second album right once. Tanya was a brilliant and motivated individual who was not simply another face in the throng. She put her whole herself into her music, and her ability to write songs was a reflection of that commitment. She demonstrated her flexibility and skill by contributing tunes for other bad boy artists in addition to writing for herself. Diddy first gave the impression that he was totally committed to her project, encouraging and advising her throughout the creative process. He saw her promise and the distinctive tone she could provide the label. Tanya had hope for the future in her position in the bad boy family. But as time went on, Tanya saw Diddy's attention change. She started to lose the gleam of attention she had gotten. Diddy was more focused on musicians like Biggie Smalls, who was becoming quite popular and bringing in a lot of money for the business. As the years passed, Tanya felt more and more marginalized as she struggled to manage the intricacies of her work alone. Only two of her album songs, I Love Him and The Last Time We Made Love, were ever released despite her tireless efforts. It was depressing how little attention was paid. Although Tanya was proud of her work and had put her all into it, the realities of the music business started to get to her. Tanya found it difficult to get the credit she believed she was due since Diddy was preoccupied with Biggie's popularity. She came to see that timing, luck, and the capacity to handle the sometimes choppy seas of fame were just as important in the music industry as skill. When Tanya thought back on her travels, she was quite frustrated. 
With great expectations, she had joined Bad Boy, thinking that Diddy's plan for her career would result in something